Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. I've been working on a project on and off for some time now, and that is a packable water distillation system. You know, distillation for water treatment has a lot of benefits going for it because it makes safe drinking water out of just about any water you can put into the boiling vessel, including seawater and water with suspended solids that would render popular filtration systems unserviceable in short order. The equipment itself is not subject to maintenance requirements if one empties the boiling vessel before all of the untreated water is boiled away. The disadvantages are that it is an energy and time intensive process and something small enough to be man portable limits efficiency further. So much so that its use for survival purposes is questionable and this is more of a can I do it build for myself than a survival tool. So let's talk about what we have here. The boiling vessel I chose to use is this Legacy Pathfinder stainless steel canteen. This vessel provides a positive seal which is important because steam takes a path of least resistance and steam you are working with so hard to recover will be lost to atmosphere without a positive seal. Yes, the boiling vessel does use a plastic cap with a silicone seal, but in my testing, unless this cap is exposed to direct flame, it works well for the task we are asking of it thus far. This canteen features a nesting cup and a small stove, which we are also going to use in our distillation apparatus. Our distillation apparatus is all enclosed securely in this inexpensive Cold War surplus check mess kit. It is of aluminum construction and this checks the multi-purpose task versus weight box just like our selection of our boiling vessel. You can see I perforated the lid on top as originally I had this idea of using this pot itself for the boiling vessel but I learned that the steam leaks between the lid and pot and that torpedoed that idea. Fortunately, this makes for an excellent distillate collection of vessel, as well as its uses as a cook pot and secure container for our condensers and tubing. Let's go ahead and open it up here. We've got our lid, tubing, condenser one, and condenser two. Now our primary condenser is a quarter inch copper coil attached to a canteen lid with a compression fitting. The inside of the lid is backed up with a thin stainless insert below the silicone seal. The placement of the condenser in this location allows for the assembly to be compact enough to stow in this mess kit as well as be used effectively as a primary condenser. Now the discharge of condenser one is connected to condenser two with this high heat silicone tubing. This tubing will withstand 200 degrees centigrade, but it will not handle direct flame impingement. And I've handled that much like this lid. And you can see it just connects to the input of condenser two as shown here. And now the discharge of condenser two, we're gonna to connect to our collection tube. And this is our distillation apparatus set up. Let's go ahead and connect it to our boiling vessel and our collection vessel and our heat sink, which we're going to use the canteen cup for. And you can see that this is how we have our apparatus set up at this time. Now we'll fill this canteen cup with water and this will act as a heat sink for condenser too. Now the water that we're going to put in our canteen cup here could certainly be contaminated water. It doesn't need to be clean water because all we're doing is, is using it as a heat sink. And as this water becomes heated in here and we start to see bubbles in here or something of that nature, we can go ahead and withdraw condenser two from our container and discard the water or recover the water and refill this with contaminated water again to continue to function as a heat sink. Now our mess kit acting as our collection vessel allows for enough venting with a slightly larger than the tubing opening and it will not inhibit the flow of distillate into the vessel but it's still sealed well enough to contain the steam and capture whatever steam is condensing on the inside of the lid to precipitate back into the collection vessel. Now to heat this vessel, we could certainly use this little stove here. It's all part of the package that we are already carrying on or about our person or 
to make it more efficient we could use my little rocket stove I built about a decade before and that build is in my content catalog if you want to look at it. So it's easy to see just how labor intensive this evolution can be. So we're going to use an electric burner here to provide our heat source instead of burning things just as a proof of concept and we're going to take a liter of water and we're going to see just how much water in one hour we can collect as distillate and see how much is lost as steam. Putting one liter of water into our container. And we're going to go ahead and the process starts. When I put our distilling apparatus on our burner. Time starts now. Well, our one hour test is complete. Let's see how much water we've recovered. Go ahead and turn our burner off. So you can see here that in one hour of distillation time with this apparatus, we're at around 300 milliliters of water, about 325 milliliters. Yep, it's distilled water. It has no taste whatsoever. Now let's see just how efficient our distillation process was, how much water was lost as steam, I don't think we're going to lose much. So with the two sips of water that I've taken out of this vessel, we're right underneath the 300 milliliter line. And remember we had one liter of water that went into this. Let's see how much, if any, was lost as steam. So here are the results. In one hour of time, soup to nuts, we distilled 325 milliliters of water. In those two sips I took, I drank 25 milliliters of water. We emptied our boiling vessel back into our beaker and we're at the 900 milliliter line. So that means we lost 75 milliliters of water to the atmosphere. Certainly not perfect, but not too bad for an arrangement such as this. We'll be doing this again with dirty water and we'll show you just what kind of a difference it could make. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.